Modern Life is Rubbish interview. That's right. So, um, shit, okay. That's the official part of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, okay, we're, um, how many days? We're three days into your trip to Budapest, right? Uh, yeah, it's exactly. A, it's a Wednesday, you're leaving later today. So we had, uh, we had our uh, second uh, party together on Saturday at Pontoon. Mm -hmm. How was that for you? It was really amazing, I must say. It was really a good, a good party and lo loads of people. And I think me and Peppa played pretty good sets. So, um, yeah, the crowd was rocking it, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I think it's a really good spot because you just, you can catch the people obviously who come play for you, but you can also really catch a lot of new people, which is a really exciting opportunity, I think. Um, and you guys had a great night out in Budapest afterwards, yeah. still. Checked out Larm, yeah. checked out a couple places. Um, and so I'm really glad that you, we were able to bring you back the second time and that, um, that this is now like a, a new phase for, for us as well as a team that like there's returning faces. It's so nice. Um, so yes. I'm also particularly happy to, to get, get to know a little bit more about you because yeah, I have less and less time to hang as you, <laughs> yeah, as you noticed. Um, Busy so, man. so this is the hang. This is like the, the hang hang. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I always, I always joke about this now with the with the other people as well. But it's it's quite true. Like, there's like so much that can be really talked through in this interview. I kind of keep everything for that interview. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I only want to get to know you during the interview. Shoot. Um, Shoot. So. Maybe, um, you know, as I was saying earlier, I'd love to get a sort of timeline of uh, the whole Modern Life is Rubbish project and your musical journey as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I'd, I'd probably just throw the ball to you and, and let you kind of start at the point where you'd like to start. Um, maybe the start of the Modern Life is Rubbish project, maybe the start of, you know, you getting to know the Studio Barnhus guys, or just the start of music itself for you from like childhood. Mm -hmm. Start wherever um, you feel like starting. I mean, yeah, like I got to meet uh, Axel Buman in, I think 2008, 2009, probably at Sonar through some, uh, through my sister's ex-boyfriend, actually Jens, who who released Axel's first stuff on our Vision recordings. Okay. And uh, yeah, then we just continued talking over the years. I sent him some music, and then after me losing this album that I was going to release back in 2012, then I started. I got to meet uh, Einar um, through a friend of mine, Tapia, and he. Um, uh, we, yeah, we started making music. We started getting along and started making music together, but like more non-dance stuff. And so I think this was around 2014, 2015. Uh, Axel was playing um, in at Nizza in Barcelona. And then we went back to his hotel and just had some drinks. And I showed him this loop of uh, Spanish lowlife. And he was like, wow, you, you really need to finish this. Like, and, and so we did. He said, basically, we should do like, um, he really loves our music, you know, like the one we were doing, which eventually now we are starting to finish as our first album. But uh, so we did, yeah, he said like, why don't you guys do some dance EPs? So we started doing that, and then we released uh, Swedish Low Life EP next next year, 2016. And uh, yeah, what should I continue after that? I think I'll, I'll I'll dissect that a bit and jump back, and we'll we'll mm -hmm. go through everything. So, um, 2012, you lost an album. Yeah, so I was. Tell tell us. T so how. 
How, how did that happen? Um, basically, I started um, releasing music in two, 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 <laughs> 2009 and 2010. Solo? I started, yeah, as, um, as just me, uh, Gegenheimer. And then I started um, working on an album uh, for a guy called Melon from Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. He had a label called Rati Music, and I released one EP with him which one track was me and another track was the guy Jens from Our Vision. And then I started working on the album and it was going to be released on his label, partially Rush Hour. But um, so, yeah, my computer, my new computer, uh, one year old SSD hard drive, uh, Mac Book Pro, just died after one year. and. Uh, I returned it to them. No to backups? Uh, yes, I had, a, I had a backup. Yeah. So basically what happened was I took it to the Apple store and they were super nice, like fixed everything, but they returned it to me with a new problem. So basically it didn't turn on, fixed it, and there was a new problem with the, with the, the screen just went bananas, you know. So I returned it again, and at the same time my external hard drive died for some reason that I don't know. So they were like, Oh, we're so sorry. Uh, I'll just bring the the everything to us. We'll give you a new hard drive for for, for fucking this up for you. And um, so I was yeah, wow, amazing service. And then they said like three to five days. I didn't hear anything for two weeks, so I got a little bit worried. I called them and they said yeah, they're gonna call you. We're, they're fixing it. They're gonna call you tonight. Next day the same, nothing. They didn't call. So I went and spoke to the manager, and he said, yeah, apparently there uh, was another problem with the computer cable, uh, computer, no, no, uh, the camera cable. So come back in two days. And then I'd already like signed everything, like the, you know, when you go to the Apple store, you sign this paper. And they were gonna do the backup for me. So I go there, and uh, everything was gone. And they gave me like an old external, like an old hard drive. I was like, so what's this? Oh, it was a, apparently it was a problem with your hard drive and there was absolutely nothing on my computer. So everything that I've been working on for two years was gone. And your external hard drive fried at the same time? Yes, and they were supposed to make the backup for me with the new hard drive that they gave me for free. So after that, of course, I learned, uh, I, I, I mean, I, did, I didn't know if I was gonna shout at the manager or cry, but they gave me a, the computer I have now, which, which, uh, which it, it was a pretty good upgrade, but it was still like two years of music that I lost and everything else that I had on that computer. And, and what kind of stuff was that? Um, I mean, it was, the album was very, I still have some songs I might, which I might release someday, but yeah, those are like rough drafts, not rough drafts, but they're like, stuff that I can maybe do overdubs on top, but mm. that's it. Mm. But it was quite melancholic, very like poppy, deep house, I'd say. Okay. So yeah, anyway, I mean, I, I uh, after that I started Modern Life is Rubbish, so, which, yeah. So you met Einar right afterwards? Or? I met Einar around 2009, actually. Okay. But we didn't really start making music until 2012, I mm. think. Mm. which was around that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, but then how did, how did uh, that come about that uh, you said uh, you, uh, you guys started making non-dancey, non-dance music kind um, of stuff at first, when you first started working together? Yeah. Um, Einar, I mean, he, he comes from more like, all his family are jazz musicians. So, and he's a, like a huge Jay Dilla fan. So he was okay. bake, making like beat battles. This uh, crew called Barcelona, Barcelona Beat Battles. He was like finishing one track every week and it was all hip hop. So we, the first song we ever did was actually a very DJ Premier styled hip hop beat. We might release it one day if we find like a good rapper to it. It's actually a really good track. 
Um, and then we just, I don't know, like I've always been come, like always loved all sorts of music. So we started doing that until then Axel told us to do dance music. So how, how did that look like? You guys started making music together and then it was roughly two years of you guys working together for then uh, that moment with Axel for Spanish Low Life to kind of get that breath of life? Yeah, exactly. And um, we just agreed, I guess, to like what he was saying, because of course, like, unless you have extremely good contacts, and I'm not saying that Axel is not a, a really good contact, but like, it is easier to like start doing dance music and get into this kind of scene. And then when you release some records, uh, then you can maybe do something a bit different and release that as an album. I think mm -hmm. would have been quite hard to start off with releasing an album when no yeah, one yeah. basically knows who you are or anything. Yeah, yeah. And um, so Spanish Low Life came out. When was that? What year was that? Was that 2000? 2016. 2016. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, since then, I know the Trans World Junction EP yeah. that just came out yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, finally. Um, so there's a huge like sample clearance yeah. thing there, for example. So like, how did how did the time from then look since the Spanish Low Life EP? Okay. Yeah. So we we basically finished Spanish Low Life, uh, sorry, Swedish Low Life EP in oh, in so Stockholm. Um, and uh, after that, then we started just, we continue with our, the second EP. So yeah, there's a lot of like uh, stuff we really don't know how things happen, but w what we do know is that Axel played uh, El Baile de los Muertos, the first track on the EP. Like in most of it, as an opener in most of his sets in 2016 when we released the first one. And um, yeah, some famous, DJ, who we know now, he's used the same sample. Um, I don't know how he how that happened, but yeah, he licensed that same sample, which is like a one in a million chance. And I know him and Axel played at several gigs the same years, this that same year. So I don't know how how it happened, but uh, he decided to use that very same sample, which came out on an Analog Africa compilation. He didn't give them creds for it, which ended up, um, yeah, kind of fucking everything up for us as well. So he he released his edit of using it, uh, basically making an edit that actually got played by lo loads of big players like DJ Koza and um, Sven Veth and stuff like this, people like this. And um, so yeah, he released it in May, and of course our release was going to come out in June. So artwork and everything was sent in in February 2017. So yeah, we had to just, Barn has said we have to wait because uh, Kind of Music were releasing his edit one month before. Um, and Barn is, is quite a big label nowadays. So they really didn't, since he had licensed it, we couldn't well, what just... Do you mean, what do you mean he licensed it? He got it licensed from Analog Africa, who had the license okay. thing of the original okay. Angolan song. Okay. So we learned a lesson that we won't use like samples from any compilations But how anymore. did that stop? I don't understand how that stopped you from releasing... Could, did because you have to get a permission from him? I mean, our first EP was quite filled with samples. Um, but we didn't need any licenses for it. I mean, Axel didn't... The only prob problem he had on or Studio Barnes ever had was with ABBA 002, which was uh, Axel's a big hit on Studio Barnes. But that was like because it was an ABBA song, you know? So yeah, these yeah. are all like African records that are quite obscure. And um, yeah, so he managed to get a license, but didn't give them credits for it. So he kind of fucked up the relationship with them, wanting to deal with people getting licenses from them. So during one year, like uh, Mons from Studio Barnhus, who deals with like PR and stuff, he tried to get in contact with them. They replied, then they didn't for a year. And then Cornel was asking, saying to everyone, maybe we should change the strategy. So I was like, 
I guess we have to because otherwise another year is going to go by without anything happening. So it was really like kind of, it was disappointing, but also like, like energy consuming, you know, like not knowing what's going to happen. So I contacted Analog Africa on, on uh, Instagram. They replied actually quite fast. I started talking with one of the guys um, who is the guy tra traveling a lot and he replied then we started speaking on whatsapp then he just stopped replying and months and months just kept passing by and uh, in the end i decided to contact Pedro, who is the other guy and he was uh, he was super nice he was really sorry for everything and uh, yeah it took a long time as well but finally in december last year they signed the contract with studio barnes so yeah that happened and finally it's out. <laughs> but, what, but what was the, hmm, it's so, it sounds so obscure in a way, like what was happening there in the background that made it so slow, you know? I mean, no one, no one can really, no one can really say what happened or how like Adam Port got to actually use exactly that sample. Like Axel said, it's like one in a million chance that someone would but actually still, use that. But still then afterwards, that. it's very peculiar that they don't answer for months and they don't give any. That's, that's yeah. not very nice, but... Um, no, but I mean, they, I guess they also got like, um, not really wanting to deal with any people, especially since in their contract, they need, like, it says that you have to put license from Analog Africa. Like, if you look on the rec new record from us, it says everything there. Yeah. And he did, Adam Port didn't do this, so... That kind of yeah. slowed them down and maybe to wanting to wanting to work with people mm. licensing because mm. there are a lot of people who actually write them and they are super busy because they're constantly releasing like obscure music from africa yeah. Hmm. but yeah that at least um peter was super nice and uh, we he helped us out so i'm happy with that of nice course. now it's finally out and so what other plans are there when, when are the next eps coming so we got an EP coming up in September with the Mad Mats from Sweden, this local hero and legend, DJ legend, um, who has a label called Local Talk. He also runs uh, Basic Fingers and I think G-A-M-M. Um, so that's coming out. So we sent him that, um, we sent him like several songs. Mm. Back. <clears throat> Technical. So um, we so, that's coming out in September. Um, it's kind of I don't know. You, you could. It's a bit different because we didn't barely use any samples at all, and we did it with our friend uh, Arnau Obiols, who um, who normally plays with, with us at least in in Spain. So far, he's played percussion on our gigs, live gigs. Um, so that's going to come, be coming up more, more live gigs, as um, some people who follow us know and like friends of us know that Einar doesn't really like DJing. It's not his thing, and he's a live musician, so he just want to do live shows. So um, the new EP on Local Talk is kind of like it's a very crowd, crowd rock beat with a very warm synth melodies. It was basically us recording drums more or less a year earlier with her now. We recorded like several drum takes and uh, then we got together one day in his studio, in our now studio, and just jammed on synthesi synthesizers and, uh, and uh, guitars and then just got everything together and created that. And another day we did the, the dub version. Mm. That's coming out, and then we have another EP coming on Prince Thomas uh, International label, um, which is the other songs that we that Mats also liked, but we decided kind of like it was a different sound than local talk, in, at least in my opinion. So that's coming out around October or something. And apart from that, that's a kind of very dark percussive story, but mm. also Everything is live, so it's no basically no samples. Yeah. Um, then we are trying to finish our third Studio Bonus EP next month, and uh, also 
start working on what's left to work on on the album that we basically started 2012 which and, is completely no dance music at all. And how, how has the journey of that album been? In the meanwhile, has it been on the shelf? Or yeah, how has it left? Yeah, it's definitely been on the shelf. Um, so we are going to try to do some new overdubs on some of the older songs. And also we have some new songs. Yeah. So it's basically, I would maybe call it like... Uh, space traveling dream world music or something like this you yeah, know, yeah. Like where it's it's i would like it to be uh, basically maybe a max an hour long um where it basically is like some of my old dj mixes where you get taken like on a real journey where the songs kind of merge into each other and uh it's going to be really interesting and let's I have no idea where or when that would be released but it's going to be interesting what labels could be interested yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no idea if Studio Bonus would release something like that since it's more they normally release more electronic dance yeah, music yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah we have some labels in mind so let's see what happens but it's really and we have some remixes also that I can't really say the labels yet but and some people coll collaborations as well. Nice. So the the second album on so second EP with Arnau on Prince Thomas International, it's with him but under another alias. But it's also with Arnau actually. Cool. Yeah. And so I, I want to also dig a little bit into like what, your your head as a musician because I went through your SoundCloud and I as you mentioned your older mixes I I saw these like really, uh, you can see that they're really uh, meticulously thought out, real like journeys, as you say, more mm. so. And I mean, there's uh, like three or four different uh, mix series, I guess, that you did, yeah. like two, three part mix series. Um, and, and I saw they, they, they went back as far as five, six years from yeah. now. So. Um, yeah, for you, how much of your time and your thinking is is the DJ side of things? Is the you know the selecting side of things? How much of it is the production side of things? How 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 does it fit in your uh, in in your head? Uh, regarding pr making music, or yeah, and or? time and just how. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't really do that anymore, like those long DJ mixes, because it takes so much time. Like those mm. long DJ mixes to way too much time than like how much I would time, have time how, to how do now. How much time did they take? Oof, some of them I did like, it, I worked on for like several months, I think. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was more like kind of, some of it was live and then I mixed it together, but some of it was also just like uh, done in log logic, just putting track after track. Really? Like really trying to just make every track go merging into another track but completely different story like if you hear there are parts where it's like um, going into india then it's like latin then it's like folk music so many many different styles so kind of like that's what i we want with and we've always wanted with modern life is rubbish um, is this like taste of different worlds yeah, I mean, you can also like hear it in the way we use samples, which w it w we've always been influenced by the avalanches, how they, I mean, it's, it's kind of hip hop styled sampling, but the way they use samples ins really inspired us to, to do our music. And it's kind of like picking, you can have like, a, like on Baile de los Muertos, like a, there's a Peruvian sample, and then there's like this um, Indian sample here and there, and then there's like something, some little part from a movie, etc. So you, if you, the way they did it, we kind of also tried to do, um, which is just when you use samples in that way, and then add your own melodies, or just you find a little sample, and then you maybe record it yourself. You just create something. We try to. We don't try, but it, it just comes natural for us to die, give something fresh. And especially like yeah, use organic sounds. I think it's more and more coming for sure. Uh, the organic touches to, to electronic music. Yeah. Like a anything. And Einar is a big uh, 
I love the way he he works and thinks in his mm. mind because mm. he always I send him something over and he's always gonna say like yeah but maybe this and this and that and like I'm thinking oh oh yeah okay so, you know so we it's really it's really nice like I could it it just would not work modern life is rubbish just me yeah, like yeah. I understand that he doesn't want to DJ but like um, our project is just like we need each other so much because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's the musician. I'm also a musician, a guitarist, but he's just so, he's a jazz musician. So he yeah. thinks in such a different way yeah, with some yeah. things, you know. And um, maybe now it's nice to, to then loop back to the past. So how did this name come about with you guys? So basically Modern Life is Rubbish was Blur's second album and uh, Blur, got really successful on their first album, but they kind of didn't really have an identity, like a um, personal sound. Um, and they, it went super well for them on the UK tour. Then they completely fucked it up on the US tour. So everyone thought they were going to be a one hit, one hit wonder band. And this was like 91. Then they started doing new music and 93 when it was like the peak time of American music, like Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Sonic Youth. Um, like all these English bands were kind of like, not dying out, but they weren't that popular, like My Bloody Valentine or like Stone Roses, you know. Um, so they just wanted to have like a really British image for their second album. And EMI, their label, they were like, you are crazy. But they went against the stream, you know. So they released Modern Life is Rubbish. And it was the beginning of Britpop, that album. And then, of course, they went too far with some Britpop. But they, that's what it means for me. You know, I think Modern Life is Rubbish is, of course, a super ironic name because we love technology. But it, it is a very ironic name. And also, it um, kind of shows how we are living nowadays. I mean, Transworld Junction is the, like... Uh, tells that story. I don't know if you read it, but it's about this Martian that comes to save us from our current dead state of mind. So it's similar. So Modern Life is Rubbish stands for all that. It's like quite deep for us. I'm glad that, uh, that now all of these things are maybe now blooming and you're going to take the live show around yeah. more and more now, I yeah. guess. We got, um, well, for now, at least the coming months, uh, we're going to Sweden to play in the south of Sweden. Then we mm. have a gig on the co uh, coast of Spain, mm. like north of Barcelona. Mm. And we just did a live show where also Pep played two weeks ago. So yeah, I hope more gigs are going to come. I mean, I, I hope so now that we, we got into the Neptune Music Agency. So we're really happy to work with Alex, Alexander Lindblad who is Sasse, Freestyle Man's uh, wife. She used to run Backroom Entertainment for 20 years. You, I'm sure you know that agency. Right, right. Uh, so now she split up with Alma, who, who was the other girl. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been good. We've gotten some gigs so far, but now I guess releasing three records within five months, I'm sure that will maybe help to get some yeah. more gigs. Yeah. And I want to, get more live gigs. I also want to get DJ gigs, of course, because I love DJing. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. that's, that's how I kind of think. Like when I do a track many times, I kind of, it's very similar like Kink. He started as a DJ and then he just realized how much he loves machines. And he is like, he is like DJing when he does his live shows. Like he is doing exactly many things like a good DJ should be doing, you know, like, yeah, yeah, playing yeah. with the bass or like playing with this and this and this. He's always maintaining the crowd. And I think that's really important when you do music as well. I always try to imagine how this would sound if I was playing it outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nice. So yeah, we, we really hope for all the best. I think hopefully people will like the new records and stuff. Yeah. I think I think it's an exciting uh, year ahead of you guys. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm also really waiting for, um, well, Einar is about to finish the um, video for the Transworld Junction, which is going to be really extremely funny, <laughs> I think. Nice. Yeah, the, the people video is really funny, like from he's our your, last He's the in-house video editor as well? 
Uh, he's he's just extremely talented with with this. <laughs> like he just he's, I don't know how many hours he spends on like finding these weird ass videos. Like I don't know, there's like uh, <laughs> the teaser of that we put up on Instagram. Like there's all these weird beam horror movie videos that he just cuts together and yeah yeah the so vibe. it's kind of telling the story of behind the record yeah with the images crazy stuff <laughs>
Mm. And I started we, we started a band, me and my friends, when I was 15, 16. And after that, I kind of got into like more the American sound, like Sonic Youth, Tortoise. Um, what else? Yeah, like after that, I started like buying records. That was maybe when I was 17. Um, and I started collecting everything. I also got to meet a super nice guy who was kind of like a musical mentor, mentor for me, Hansi mm. Gipsler from Stockholm. Mm. He used to write for this magazine that still exists, free magazine called Nöjeskajren in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. And he just introduced me to like all this. He introduced me to Joe Closell. Like that's my first house track that I heard from Joe Closell. Then I heard Derek May. Like he got me into the perfect, the like best sounding house or like the deep house, you know? So he showed me Detroit Techno, Spiritual House, then he showed me Spiritual Jazz, Psych Rock, uh, folky stuff, basically everything. So I just started eating all this and like started buying records. And then maybe around 2011, I started, I got into like South American music. So I basically went through all Colombian old music, all this weird synthy stuff and like Caribbean, African sounding stuff. So I started digging for other, other music and then also like Guatemala. I, I went really through like uh, South America, but then I just started collecting every, all sorts of music and I haven't stopped since, I guess. I should have bought more studio material than I bought records, but when you, you, you just become a record addict. So after that, that kind of led to, um, to just some years ago starting Magic Teapot Records. Yeah. So I did it with a friend who's also a friend of Tapia's and uh, he's not a DJ, but he wanted to like, he liked the idea to start a, like an online record shop. And then we met, uh, I met Danny from Ivern Disc, Danny Bauman, who worked for Talbot's label. And he got into Magic Teapot as well. And it was really fun for a while. And we also played at Deckmantel. Um, and we were playing now at Deckmantel Sele Selectors as well together. Um, and he's got really good music taste. The thing is, like, we're so kind of like, we stopped the record shop because we didn't stop Magic, Magic Teapot Records. It's just like, it's so time consuming. So Where was like, the shop? It was just it was online. Just online. It was yeah. just online. So it was kind of like a free... The idea was to, after a while, make like become a record label. Um, but yeah, rec being a record label requires a lot of money, a lot of time and effort to get licenses or like finding down artists. Uh, I mean, especially I'm guessing the kind of stuff that you guys are dealing with would exactly. be a whole lot of this. Yeah, yeah, like super rare stuff and like... But what were you, were you kind of a broker for these records? Did you, or, or how did it work on, on, the, on the website? I mean, or, I tried to like um, find records and then resell them. And then also like, for example, Beach Freaks, this record shop was a real big inspiration. Where's that? Yeah, uh, it's also an online record shop. Oh, it's online. And there were, I mean, there were several record shops, but maybe that one was, it's still one of my favorites. Like, the, 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 it's run nowadays by Charles Pauls, this uh, German guy who's, I mean, he has the craziest collection I probably know of. And it was run by Danny from Psychimagic, and who's also like a lovely guy and a great collector. So all of this inspired us to start Magic Teapot Records. But since it then requires so much time, we decided to stop for now and focus. Danny is working with Nika, which is the first audiophile sound system bar in Barcelona. So he's the booker there and he's also working as A&R for Iver, Iver Discs, Talabot's label. And I am too busy right now to like finish music, which is my main focus now, just getting music out there and getting more gigs and like, yeah, just work more like all, all together with music, but with, the pro with Modern Life is Rubbish and Sondos and other stuff that I want to do. So also during this time, we'll just try to like um, 
get together some ideas, get together some stuff that we want to release on. We were actually working on this release um, that now Numero Group re reissued, uh, this guy called Chessman. And uh, yeah, he kind of went behind our back and, and chose Numero Group because they're America's biggest reissue label. So after that, we kind of thought, oh, you know what, let's just have a break now and do our own shit. And then in the near future, who knows, we'll try to really do things well. Also because like artwork wise, we would like to do something like, I don't know if you know this label called Firecracker from, from Scotland. They are, their design, their artwork are like, it's like insane. So we want to do quality vinyls with like music that uh, kind of could have been here, like heard on, on our Crossfingers mix or our Deckmantle mix last year that we did, that kind of vibe. It's been, a, it's been great. It was a free introduction for everyone, for us as a future label, because we haven't paid anything and people have really, um, people have really given us great feedback, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, so it was a free, free promo promotion. We haven't paid anything for it and people have gotten to know us. Yeah. So they will know what's up when we, uh, nice. whenever we start the label. Nice, yeah. nice, awesome. Well, I think that's a really, really uh, interesting route for you as such a collector and, and this being such a big part of your life, your whole life. And um, yeah, I mean, next time, you know, we'll see what's up with uh, Magic Teapot and hopefully we get a life from you guys as well. And um, yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, it's, it's, exci stuff. it's some exciting times. And as I said earlier, it's really, I'm really happy to work with uh, having Alexandra as, um, as uh, our agent because I've known her. My first release in electronic music was on Mood Music, Sasa and Freestyle Man's label. And I got to know her then, so I've known her for 10 years. And now that stuff has started happening for me and us, um, she was like asking Sasa. Basically, we got into Neptune Music. It was on, I was at my parents' place on, on Christmas Eve. And uh, Sasa was like call, calling me and I was like at 2.30 a.m. And I'm at my parents. I was having like, I was talking with someone. I was quite busy at, at that time. And uh, he was like calling nonstop and I was like, what do, you, what do you want? And like, I got pissed at him. I was like, Tassi, what the fuck do you want? And he's like, no, Alex wants to talk with you. And they were like having a chat. They'd been like having dinner with her, her, her parents in Germany. And then, she, yeah, she, I phoned her up and she said, no, I want you to be, become a part because she, Sasa, she was asking, so whose agent is Mark? Who's, what agency is he with? No, he doesn't have an agent. So, and I hadn't been searching for any agent because I, Axel's agent, for example, Annabelle, and also Fungal's, Fungal's manager um, had told me like, it's better just to release music and then the agencies will come to you. And uh, that was quite, um, seemed quite reasonable. So that's how we got into Neptune Music Agency that, uh, that way. And I'm glad because I've known her for so long. She's yeah. such, such a nice lady. You know? Nice. Yeah. Sick, man. Well, I'm just something I wanted to, to uh, throw. No, throw no, no. There. Really, shout out, Alex. We love you, Alex. We, we went kind of DIY on this one, but next time. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy that you guys came over. I'm super happy and, too. You know, um, it's a pleasure always. Yeah, and it's such a, it's such a, it's such a nice feeling. Like um, compared to last year, you know, you guys are also arriving into kind of a bigger community yeah. of people here in Budapest, and and you guys have like five, ten homies already lined up in the city. Yeah, totally. Ready to hang. It's so, super, um, super nice. So I, I love the city. I mean, it's great. It just has everything. I mean, especially now that it's summer, it's super hot. But it's like it's. Such a nice city. People are very nice and humble, I think, and they give you everything. They're just super kind, all, all of them. I mean, you included. <laughs> We're here at your house. <laughs> and um, food is great. Everything is cheap. 
Um, yeah, I, love to, I just feel every time that I'm here, I just want to come back soon. <laughs> Pe well, Pepper says the same, so. Till next time, man. I mean, I'm curious to see that live. Yeah. Let's make it happen.